Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel Dhani Classes. If you are watching my video for the first time, do subscribe my channel, hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever new video will be uploaded. So in today's video, we will cover the first part of the chapter, The Portrait of a Lady, written by Kushwan Singh from Class 11 CBSC. So let's get started. Let's talk about the author, The Portrait of a Lady written by Kushwan Singh. He was an Indian author, a lawyer, a journalist and politician. His experience in the 1947 confinement of India inspired him to write Train to Pakistan in 1956, which became most well-known novel. He has won the Padma Bhushan, Padma Bhushan and Punjab Ratna Award for his excellent writings. So let's understand main idea of the lesson. The portrait of a lady, that means a picture of a lady. In this lesson, the author is describing his grandmother and used different thoughts and words for her as he had very good bond with his uh, grandmother. So each and everything he is describing in this chapter and how was the relationship between grandmother and grandson. So let's begin with the first line of the chapter with line by line explanation. My grandmother, like everybody's grandmother, was an old woman. She had been old and wrinkled for the 20 years that I had known her. So here author is talking about his grandmother, that my grandmother was an old woman like others and she had a wrinkled face as I knew to her for the last 20 years. That means his grandmother became old and her skin almost shrunk and she had a same wrinkled face for the last 20 years. So what do you mean by wrinkled? That means wrinkles are lines which form on someone's face as they grow old. Further he says, people said that she had once been young and pretty and had even had a husband, but that was hard to believe. That means she was a married woman and she was so beautiful and attractive, but that was hard to believe, which means he can't believe her prettiness because for the last 20 years she had a wrinkle on her face and the author known to her for the last 20 years, so she had the same face and led her life without a husband. My grandfather's portrait hung above the mental piece in the drawing room. He wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes. That means he is talking about his grandfather as well, that my grandfather's portrait hung above the mental piece. That means he is saying that there was a picture of, my, uh, of his uh, grandfather hung above the mental piece. So mental piece refers to a heart stone. That means a space above the fireplace. His grandfather used to wear a big turban and loose fitting clothes. So that kind of portrait was there of his grandfather above the mental piece. His long white beard covered the best part of his chest and he looked at least a hundred years old. So here author is saying that his grandfather had a long white beard and that had grown a very long beard and it covered most of his chest and he looked at least a hundred years old. So his grandfather was looking very old as per the portrait. He did not look the sort of person who would have a wife or children. He looked as if he could only have lots and lots of grandchildren. So here he is saying that he did not, that means his grandfather did not look like the kind of person who would have a wife or grandchildren that means he was looking so old and it is so hard to believe that he would have a wife or children as his grandfather looked so old so he was thinking that he could have lots and lots of grandchildren now he is saying that as for my grandmother being young and pretty the thought was almost revolting she often told us of the games she used to play as a child so now he is saying that it is very hard to believe that my grandmother was young and pretty so she used to tell them about the games which she used to play when she was a child. That seemed quite observed and undignified on her part and we treated it like the fables or prophets she used to tell us. So here he is saying that whatever she told us that seemed quite observed and undignified that means fake story or appearing foolish or unseemly and it seems the story of prophets that means the story of a god or fortunes teller stories. She had always been short and fat and slightly bent. Her face was crisscross of wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere. So here he is saying that she had always been short and fat and slightly bent. 
so now author is describing the physical appearance of grandmother that she was short and fat and slightly bent and her face was a crisscross of wrinkles that means containing a number of straight lines on face and uh, there were a lot of paths which intersect each other no we were certain she had always been as we had known her so by seeing her physical appearance it was very hard to believe that once she was young and pretty and why the author is saying like this because he had been known to her for a long time and her face was crisscross of wrinkles throughout those years old so terribly old that she could not have grown older and had stayed at the same age for 20 years so here he is saying that she was too old and she could not have grown older and she was looking same for the past 20 years and she was looking very old she could never have been pretty but she was always beautiful so here kushwan singh is saying that she could never have been pretty but she was always beautiful that means she was down to earth and she had a nice behavior in her life and especially for the grandson and others as well. She hobbled about the house in spotless white with one hand resting on her waist to balance her stoop and the other telling the beads of her rosary. So here author is saying that she had a pain in her waist and that's why she hobbled about the house that means she was not able to walk properly just because of the pain and she used to wear spotless white clothes and she used to keep her one hand on the on her waist because of making balance to walk and another hand she had the rosary and telling beads so what do you mean by telling beads here that means she keeps chanting god her silver locks were scattered untidily over her pale pickered face and her lips constantly moved in audible prayer so here the author is saying that her silver locks were scattered that means her silver hair was spread in different direction over her lighter colored face and wrinkled face and her lips move in an audible prayer that means nobody could hear or loudless prayer with lips is moving on further he is saying yes she was beautiful she was like the winter landscape in the mountains an expanse of pure white serenity breathing peace and containment so here he is saying that yes his grandmother was so beautiful and she like a winter landscape in the mountains that means when you look at her you will feel the white landscape as like as mountains with the snow that means he is comparing his grandmother with the snow covered mountains and saying that when you look at her portrait of her grand of his grandmother it shows peace calmness and satisfaction on her face my grandmother and i were good friends my parents left me with her when they went to live in the city and we were constantly together so here he is saying that i was one of the best friend of my grandmother and we had a great bond and my parents left me with her when they went to live in the city so from that day we were living together so as he was living with his grandmother so in this way he had a great relationship with his grandmother she used to wake me up in the morning and get me ready for school so here author is saying that his grandmother used to wake him up every morning and at that time the author used to go to school every day and she helped him to get ready for school she said her morning prayer in a monotonous sing song while she bathed and dressed me in the hope that I would listen and get to know it by heart. I listened because I loved her voice but never bothered to learn it. So here he is saying that every day she used to keep on singing the prayer when she used to bath me and dressed me up for school and saying that I keep on listening her prayers just because of I loved her voice. But I never tried to learn it and never bothered to go in the deep meaning to understand the prayer. Then she would fetch my wooden slate which she had already washed and plastered with yellow chalk, a tiny earthen ink pot and a red pen, tie them all in a bundle and hand it to me. So afterwards she used to fetch my wooden slate that means a slate in which children used to write in the beginning and she used to wash and uh, plastered his slate with yellow chalk ready and tiny earthen ink pot that means a small pot for holding ink and red pen and she used to tie them all in a bundle and hand it over to him to go to school 
Further, he is saying after a breakfast of thick stale chapati with a little butter and sugar spread on it, we went to school. So here he is saying that he used to have chapati in the morning and chapati was thick and stale. That means chapati was heavy in size and no longer fresh with a little butter and sugar spread on it. And then he used to go to school. So this kind of breakfast he used to have at that time. She carried several stale chapatis with her for the village dogs. So while going to school, his grandmother used to carry chapatis with her to feed street dogs. My grandmother always went to school with me because the school was attached to the temple. The priest taught us the alphabet and the morning prayer. So here he is saying that grandmother used to go along with him every day because the school was nearby the temple and she used to go to the temple every day for prayers. So there was a priest who taught them the alphabet and morning prayers and the priest used to teach children as well. While the children sat in a row on either side of the branda singing the alphabet or the prayer in a chorus, my grandmother sat inside reading the scriptures. So while the children were learning what the grandmother used to do, she used to sit inside the temple and read scripture. That means she used to read a holy book. When we had both finished, we would walk back together. So here the author is saying that after school, we came back home together. This time the village dogs would meet us at the temple door. They followed us to our home growling and fighting with each other for the chapatis we threw to them. So here he is saying that as they were returning to home, the village dogs would meet us at the temple because dogs were waiting for chapati and other food stuffs because his grandmother used to feed the dogs and they were growling and fighting with each other for the chapatis when we threw to them. That means when they threw them a chapati, or piece of chapati, they were fighting to get the chapatis. When my parents were comfortably settled in the city, they sent for us. So when his parents comfortably settled in the city, they called him to come there in the city and live with them. That was a turning point in our friendship. Although we shared the same room, my grandmother no longer came to school with me. So when his parents called him back to the city, that was the turning point in their friendship. That means there was a great change in their friendship between grandmother and grandson. And when they went to the city, they had the same room. That means a grandmother and the author had the same room to live. But he is saying that his grandmother no longer to come to school with me. That means grandmother did not go to school with him as she used to go earlier. I used to go to an English school in a motor bus. There were no dogs in the streets and she took to feeding sparrows in the courtyard of our city house. So here he is saying that she, he used to go to school by bus. So his grandmother started feeding sparrow instead of street dogs in the courtyard because she no longer came to school with him. So what do you mean by courtyard? That means the front space of the house in the city. As the years rolled by, we saw less of each other. So here he is saying that as the years rolled by, that means year after year, they rarely met each other or see each other when they settled in the city. So this is the end of the first part of the chapter. Let's look at the second part of the chapter in my next video. For more informative videos, do subscribe my channel, hit the bell icon so that I get notified whenever new video will be uploaded. So thank you so much for watching once again. Stay safe, stay healthy.